Schultz, welcome back to the show. Former federal prosecutor Andrew Cherkasky and Monica Crowley, former assistant treasury secretary for public affairs. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Monica, let's first talk about the timing of the Trump indictments. There's a lot of discussion about this. Larry Kudlow has covered it. It comes immediately, a lot of these indictments come immediately after news breaks about Biden family corruption and allegations of bribery. Look at the timeline. Uh, do you see any evidence voters are now starting to think these legal actions are driven by politics, Monica? Yeah, absolutely, Liz. I mean, we've certainly seen a pattern over the last four months that every time a big story drops about Biden family corruption leading directly to the Oval Office and the current occupant of that office, Joe Biden, literally the next day, within 24 hours, Liz, you get another indictment of Donald Trump. And it began with Alvin Bragg in New York. And the most recent one, of course, was just this week yesterday uh, with Jack Smith. So there is a pattern that shows a direct political line from the exposure of Joe Biden's crimes to indictments of Donald Trump. And what I think the American people are clear about now, Liz, is that Donald Trump is actually being indicted for the crimes of Joe Biden and his family. I think they're waking up to it. We've seen recent polling showing upwards of 60 percent and climbing of the American people now believe that these indictments of Donald Trump are political in nature and have nothing to do with the law. Well, you know, that's what that's the fight, right, Andrew, what Monica just said. I mean, we have Mike Pence, the 2024 contender. You know, he says anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president. There's that fight, right? You can disagree with what Trump was doing around the time of the Capitol riots, which should never happen again. We're sticking to the law. We're sticking to what Biden and people are saying in D.C. Biden said they would make sure that Trump would not become the next president again. Listen to this. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power um, by uh, if we uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he uh, under legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution does not become the next president again. OK, Andrew, but federal prosecutors say this latest indictment is not constitutional, that the proper remedy is impeachment, which the House brought. It's one thing to condemn the behavior of Donald Trump post-election uh, 2020. It's, an it's another to use the criminal code to attack him uh, for what he did. In fact, I think that the uh, charges are so tenuous that we have to start with a review of the jurisdiction uh, that applies here. You know, jurisdictionally, you have to question whether a president can be prosecuted for the acts that he committed while in office. This is unprecedented. The Supreme Court has never weighed in on this. And we have to remember the executive uh, wields extensive and uh, and and substantial authority. So it really is uh, unbelievable at this point to see them prosecuting Donald Trump for what he did in office. And I don't think that there's a good case to make that he was acting outside of the scope of his office. It's absolutely within the power of the executive to put a check and balance on Congress to make sure that they are engaging in their uh, actions lawfully and correctly. Okay. You know, and one of those actions is elections. So we've got lawmakers, Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise, Elise Stefanik, calling this prosecutorial abuse. T Monica, take this on. The Trump indictment states that Trump and GOP allies tried to recruit a slate of fake electors in several, seven battleground states to sign certificates falsely stating that Trump, not Biden, had won those states. What do you make of that part of the indictment? Yeah, that's what Jack Smith is laying the basis for fraud against the United States. But look, President Trump and his team at the time were raising legitimate questions about this highly controversial election, which was really determined by a razor thin margin of 44,000 votes across three states. And so what Trump was trying to do was lay a contingency plan, Liz, by while he was uh, taking the case to the courts, to have it adjudicated, he was also laying the, the groundwork for a contingency plan of alternative le electors if and when uh, the judges who were reviewing this case at his request actually gave the green light to go ahead. Now, the judges ruled against him throughout all of this, so the plan was never triggered. So for Jack Smith to, to make that as one of the bases, one of the counts here, is really, really outrageous. So that's and it's weak, not too. That's a weakness as well. That's a weakness in this indictment as well. I mean, the indictment, to Andrew, to what Monica just said, the indictment also says Trump does have free speech rights. 
It's, claim, it's saying he broke the law when he acted on lies, you know, contested the 2020 results. That's a broad theory of conspiracy to defraud the United States. The Wall Street Journal says special counsel Smith just might have criminalized Democrats contesting election results. They did that in 2000, 2004, 2016. Look at these Democrats who had contested prior election results. We got to get to the sound of uh, what federal former federal prosecutors and the and legal analysis of this case. Watch this. Since the attack on our capital, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. These are not strong criminal cases against anybody, let alone a former president, who, by the way, was impeached for conduct that was relating to this anticipated indictment, which is the remedy that the Constitution calls for. Impeachment is the remedy in the Constitution for presidential misconduct in office, and they look like they're pursuing him out of office. That was one of the most demagogic presentations I've ever seen in a high-profile criminal case. Any normal person reacting to that would assume that Trump was alleged to have carried out the Capitol riot. And then you turn to his indictment, he's not charged with the Capitol riot. Andrew, final word. Impeachment is the path. They tried it. It wasn't a law. point. Create a terrible forward. All right, you're, you're, we're having trouble with your sound. Monica, can you wrap this up for us? Thank you, Andrew, though. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think, Liz, uh, most, uh, uh, most legal observers here do not believe that this is going to survive appellate review if there is, in fact, a conviction. If it goes all the way to the Supreme Court, people expect it to be bounced uh, out of the Supreme Court as well. But look, the process is the punishment here. You know, it's it's not okay. it, it's not that it's grounded in substantial law or sound legal reasoning here. It's about punishing Donald Trump through the process. That's what Jack Smith, Merrick Garland, and the DOJ are doing, and by extension, President Biden, because it is his team doing all of this to the chief political level of the president of the United States. It's completely outrageous and very okay. dangerous. Got it. Andrew, we'll have you back on. Don't you worry now, okay? Andrew Tracaske, Monica Trally. Crowley, that was terrific. Thank you for joining us.